Have you ever flipped a coin before to determine, I don't know, maybe you've got kids in the house and one of them wanted to sit in the middle seat? Uh, well, you can't do that in the front of a car anymore because we don't have bench seats. But, you know, you flip the coin sometimes just to break some sort of tie around the house. And you've seen it done a few times, perhaps, things going on at school. or They did six coin flips in Iowa last night in six precincts, Democrat Party precincts, where apparently Bernie Sanders was tied with Hillary Clinton, and in order to decide who was going to get that precinct, now keep in mind, Clinton finished, they're not doing it the same way as Republicans. There's not individual votes. So when you see the Clinton-Sanders numbers, they're much smaller. But she essentially won by five precincts. They had to do six coin flips. She won each and every one of them. Now, you may be saying... Hillary Clinton, of course, is one of the most honest people who we've ever seen in American politics, and for that very reason, she wouldn't be doing anything, well, and the party supporting her wouldn't be doing anything that would be a little shady. That would never happen. So she comes out ahead with a victory, uh, and essentially a 50-50 tie, with a man who was never supposed to be anywhere near her during this whole process, this whole election process. And people are starting to call foul. Bernie Sanders this morning is asking that some of these votes be counted so we can get a better idea on what really happened during the course of all of these coin flips last night and why, with the odds and probability so heavily stacked against someone winning six times in a row, it actually happened. Sanders, meanwhile, never expected to be this close to Hillary Clinton in the Iowa caucus. She had a 50-point lead some months ago. As soon as he left Iowa, he flew into the uh, into the smallest airport he could find, apparently. I was looking at it this morning on a video. Smallest airport he could find where they're allowed to park truck trailers out on the runway. Because he got off the airport in the, or off the airplane in the wee hours this morning and he climbed atop this platform and he addressed a large crowd. <laughs> excitement is we have made the decision we are not going to have a super PAC. We don't want money from Wall Street. We don't want money from the drug companies. We don't want money from corporate America. It is amazing what you can accomplish when you walk through a few dormitories and say free beer at the airport. And you can get a very, very large crowd out at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning when that happens, 10 minutes after 8 o'clock. Look, very short opening segment of the program today because we have a guest coming up at 8.15. His name is Raul Labrador. You may know him. He is the congressman from the lucky part of Idaho. Yeah, okay. I, I, some people may get that. Some may take a little bit longer. If you're a Democrat, it might not quite register with what we're talking about. He's going to spend about 10 minutes with us coming up in just a short while and He'll break down his thoughts on what happened in Iowa yesterday as well. Keep in mind, he he endorsed a long time ago Rand Paul for president. Mr. Paul last night barely squeezed through Iowa and likely will not survive much longer beyond uh, New Hampshire or even South Carolina. That's all my money he's running on. I, well, it's some of it anyway uh, that I sent his way a while back. But there is a story out over the weekend uh, that, that, that I happened to see, and it said something along the lines of the Freedom Caucus, of which... Congressman Labrador is a member of, they may be switching their allegiance to Ted Cruz, who was, despite what the media is telling you, Ted Cruz won in Iowa last night. Marco Rubio finished third. Third place is not first. It is not even second. But media, of course, doesn't like Ted Cruz. It doesn't like Donald Trump. So if they can't have John Kasich, who they like, uh, they, 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 who they backed in, uh, in New Hampshire already, because uh, he's a good Republican and that he might actually be a liberal. So now they're backing the establishment. And I do not trust Marco Rubio. 
not after what I've seen of him in the last couple of weeks and some of the things that have come out of his mouth. And there are certain people when they get behind a candidate, you know what I'm talking about. As soon as they do that, you say to yourself, I don't think so. I don't think that's my guy. I don't think I want him anywhere. So the media is now saying, oh, Rubio had this great surge at the last minute. Well, there's a fellow by the name of Eric Erickson who has a website called The Resurgent. And he said this today, and I was looking at this. He said, Ted Cruz has not only outperformed, he is the only politician in America to successfully turn Donald Trump into a loser. The media would prefer you to look at Marco Rubio's commendable showing, but given the polling spreads, Ted Cruz actually outperformed Rubio. Uh, why is mainstream media then promoting Rubio? Well, because they don't like Ted Cruz. They don't want to vote for Ted Cruz, so they don't want you to vote for Ted Cruz. You understand that? Because they're right about everything. They're media people. They're smart. They're curing cancer. They're building rocket ships. They know everything there is to know about everything, as soon as they usually sober up after a night out. Raul Labrador on the way, as I mentioned just a moment ago, the congressman joining us here this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Top story with Bill Colley. And thank you for tuning in as well on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Just to share a little bit of something I, I've got here with you that I've been thinking about with all of these uh, political machinations in the last few weeks. And I think it still holds uh, true today nearly, it's over 50, 52 years since these words were said. But I think it really represents especially the culture of the American West. Uh, take a listen for a moment. Let our republicanism so focused and so dedicated not be made fuzzy and futile by unthinking and stupid labels. I would remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. And let me remind you also that moderation in the pursuit of justice is no virtue. That from from Barry Goldwater, 1964, speaking at the Cow Palace in San Francisco, where the Republican Party was having its uh, its uh, national convention. Steve Millington just wandered into the studio as well. You can help me grill Congressman Labrador when he comes up in just a couple of minutes. Ooh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know that it'll be much of a grilling, but he's going to have a conversation with us about events last night. And uh, so... That was interesting last night, wasn't it? <laughs> we, we should point out, you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX at NewsRadio1310.com. Steve Millington joining us this morning. He's here until 9 o'clock. Bill Colley with you as well on the program today. Actually, Steve will be joining you again tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday uh, while I move some furniture, uh, which is exceptionally good exercise, as I learned on the uh, course of the weekend when on Sunday, Steve, my T-shirt was completely soaked after oh, running stairs for most of the day. Uh, but I needed the exercise, and it was a good stress test. I didn't feel any chest pains, so that's usually a good sign. And you're still here, and you're still going strong. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. That's what we like to hear. I left television on all night long. I, I'm not. A, I don't have a. I had. I just won't use the computer at, at the other house. But I'm. I'm in the interim while I'm moving into the new place. I'm putting in. A, staying in a hotel for a couple of days, and I had uh, the television set on all night long. Simply because I, wa- I knew I'd wake up once or twice and I wanted to hear what was going on in Iowa. I was not at all surprised that Ted Cruz ended up defeating Donald Trump. You know, I wasn't either, but I was a little shocked how handily he did it. That was, I thought that was real interesting. He came from, a couple of weeks ago, he'd had the lead. Then Trump got a big boost. Right. And supposedly, now we had, we had, Cruz down by 7, 8, 10, some polls as much as 13 points, and he stormed back to win this thing by four. Right. He, he, did, he did very well. And, and yet, uh, not only did he win, uh, but he, he won by uh, over 6,000 uh, ballot votes, too. So that uh, strong showing, strong showing for Ted Cruz. I was going to say that, 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 that is, we're sitting here, though, talking about this as if it's a big victory. He got eight delegates. Trump and uh, and Rubio both get seven. Right. So when when it push comes to shove at convention time, you know that's what we see. That's not that big a deal. And you know one of the things I find interesting, and I'm, you know, I, I like Idaho. Okay, <laughs> I like Idaho. There, there was 27 delegate votes from the state of 
Iowa to the national convention. 27. Uh, Cruz, Trump, Rubio, Carson got three. Rand Paul and Jeb Bush got one each. 27 total. Idaho. Idaho has 32 <laughs> delegates to the national convention, and we don't even get on anybody's radar. Well, here's, here's Ted Cruz last night at his little victory celebration. If you want a candidate to support life and marriage and religious liberty, then support a candidate who has spent decades of his life fighting to defend life and marriage and religious liberty. God bless the great state of Iowa. Tonight is a victory for courageous conservatives across Iowa and all across this great nation. I cannot wait to stand on that debate stage with Hillary Clinton. And as we mentioned earlier, he finished first. Rubio finished third, which means, despite what media is telling you today, he didn't win. You got that? And momentum, that applies to rocks rolling down hills. We have a, we have a caller with us, by the way, Steve. Good. Let's talk to him. Congressman Raul Labrador joining us. So we've got a, we've got a, a boat full of Republicans on the air this morning. And, and welcome to the program again, sir. Hey, thank you very much. It's great to be on your show. Hey, how many minutes do you have with us? How many what? How many minutes? I have about five or ten. We're in the middle of a hearing, so I just came out of the hearing <laughs> to, to be with you. After shoveling all the snow away. Um, yeah. uh, we, we were just discussing what happened last night in Iowa, and there was a story I saw over the weekend that said many members of your Freedom Caucus who had been backing Mr. Paul, you, of course, one of those, but that many of the members are now thinking – Maybe Ted Cruz is the guy. Will there be an official change coming on your part? You know, um, I, I'm still with Rand. I think I wish he would have had a better night. He didn't have as good a night as I wanted him to have. But uh, I don't think there's going to be any change coming. There's still a couple of more uh, elections, a couple more primaries that need to happen before something like that needs to be decided. It was a huge night for Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, and I agree with you, I think that was you who was commenting there earlier. Ted Cruz won last night. <laughs> you know, it, anybody, and I like Marco. Marco's a good friend of mine. But, you know, when he said that who would have expected us to do this well last night, I'm like, everybody expected you to come in third. That was what the polling data showed the entire time, that he was either third or fourth. I think it was a huge night for Ted and a really bad night for Trump. I think everybody else did well. I, you know, don't get me wrong. Coming in third is a good thing. Uh, but there is no question that the clear winner, especially after being attacked, he was, Ted Cruz was relentlessly attacked for two weeks or longer. And he still endured and not only endured, but did better than expected. All the polls showed him in the end losing by five points. And he actually ended up winning by four. Uh, Steve Millington here, uh, uh, Congressman. Uh, which of the remaining candidates are, are going to be subject to uh, uh, ending their campaigns? We, we saw that uh, Governor Huckabee uh, gave it up last night. Uh, which other ones are, seem to be at the greatest risk to just kind of disappear? Well, I think all the governors are probably going to be disappearing here pretty soon. Uh, and I do think that's unfortunate. I'm not one of those who thinks uh, that it should only be a senator or a member of Congress. I, 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 I'm deeply sad that somebody like Rick Perry is not still in the race. I thought Rick Perry was probably the finest candidate we've had in a long time. You know, he made that mistake in the debate four years ago, and that cost him deeply, and he was never able to recover from that. But he was one of the most successful governors that we've had in, in American history. Um, so, but I, I do think they're just not performing well. They're not doing well. And I think you will see most of the governors uh, starting to, to leave the stage. I think Ben Carson, who's a very nice man, is probably going to drop out here uh, in the next two or three races. Um, you know, there's, there's several other people. And I think it's, it, it is coming down to the one thing, the conventional wisdom that everybody – that is correct, is that it, it is coming down to a three-man race right now. So unless the other candidates can pull off an op, off, you know, upset, I think it's going to be between Cruz, uh, Trump, and, and Rubio. Mr. Mr. Trump, of course, has this image of invincibility. Uh, but after losing last night, does that all go away, or does he continue to have strong showings at the primary level? Well, I think it, it, his, 
invincibility will go away. I mean, last night was huge. Uh, no, no pun intended. <laughs> to, <laughs> you know, uh, against Trump because he made a mistake. He he made a mistake of expectations. He should have told everybody. You know, if I come in second or third in Iowa, which is a evangelical place, I will be strong because I'm in first place in 49 other states. <laughs> Uh, instead, he went in for the win because that's his personality. And by coming in a pretty weak second, I think uh, he's not inevitable anymore. And and hopefully, I, I think the media will stop giving him all the coverage. Uh, there was a, a recent study that shows that he receives 70% of the coverage. And think about that. That's free media. That you know, Somebody estimated that that's about a billion dollars in in free advertising so all the other candidates were being drowned out so hopefully now they will kind of reshuffle and they'll talk about each individual candidate according to you know to to their standings in the polls even Rand paul who i think has been hugely unf- unfairly treated by the media Rand paul it showed in this study that he has received less than one percent of the coverage this is the guy who came in fifth in iowa and he's received less than one percent of the coverage from the media. That's it's just been completely unfair, I think. So as we look at this uh, uh, primary campaign program, do we have is, is there something that, from a systematic standpoint, that we should change in our process of, e- of of selecting a nominee to run for president? Is there something systematically wrong? Or, or, no. is this, or is this the thing I, we want? I don't think it's systematically wrong. I do think we have allowed the media to have too much power. Uh. So, for example, giving so much attention to the polls. If you look at the polls, they were wrong. Right. They were wrong about Ted. They were wrong about Marco. They were wrong about Trump. They overestimated Trump's strength and the underestimated both Ted's and Marco's strength. I, I think that something needs to be done about that. I think the National Republican Party should never allow the media to decide who's going to be in the debates based on the polls. Uh, we also need to stop talking about the polls. I, I know Trump likes to talk about them and other people, but I have seen, you know, I don't know if you, you know, my race in 2010, uh, a week before the primary, I was down by three points, and I ended up winning by nine points. The my, the poll numbers throughout my entire general election, I was supposed to lose by 30 points, and I ended up winning by, by 10 points. We, we need to stop overestimating what those polls are representative of. They're really good for internal purposes when you're running a campaign because it tells you where you are at that moment with a segment of the voters. So, you know, you need to do them for your own purposes. But the over-reliance by the media and by the parties on, on polls and who's going to be uh, in the debate and who's not, I, I think that's a mistake. You know, that's an excellent point. I read an article this morning, Congressman, that said the two losers last night were, number one, Donald Trump, and number two, those lousy national polls. So you you got that one spot on. Absolutely. Yeah, and I've been saying that for a long time, and I, it's been frustrating uh, to watch, you know, all these important decisions being, deci- you know, made by by some polls that have been proven to be inaccurate in all the last last few elections and and not just against conservatives you know the polls yes. totally underestimated obama's strength and, and in, they, in the last election and they completely misread uh, bernie sanders strength right there in iowa absolutely before we wrap up and, and we want to mention uh, congressman raul labrador joining us this morning from washington uh, we've got a couple of minutes left before the break, and he has to get back to a hearing. Steve Millington in studio with us as well, with me, Bill Colley, on KLIX. Uh, you mentioned Rick Perry, just very quickly. Perry, being from a ranching background, I thought that he had the, the concerns, especially of those those of us living in the West in mind. Um, in relation to that, I know that a couple of weeks ago you were you were quoted as saying that the federal government should just stand back for a while and let things in Oregon try to set themselves you know, to see if they, they would just settle on their own. And instead, the government moved last week, and we have one person dead. Uh, do you think that someone jumped the gun? Uh, no pun intended there either. You know, I, I need to look at the data. I don't know. I can't give you an answer for that. We, we're we looking right now at exactly what happened. 
Uh, I was hopeful that there would be a, a peaceful resolution. There, there wasn't. And, uh, but, but I, I think, you know, law enforcement needs to do their job. And, and, I, and we're going to be looking at exactly what happened there. Uh, I, I just think it's sad that somebody lost their life. Uh, but, uh, but at the same time, we, we, we need to be very careful to make, you know, before we make judgments about this. It's sort of the same thing that happens, you know, when there's a police shooting in one of the inner cities. I think sometimes we're too quick to, to make judgments on those things. So I, I want to make sure that we look at all, all of that data before I make a any kind of statement on that. Well, we want to thank you for joining us and uh, some great insight there this morning. And Excellent. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Congressman, see what you can do about getting some of these guys to stop by in Idaho before our election on March 8th. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, take care, thank sir. You. Joining us this morning, Congressman Raul Labrador from Washington. As he pointed out, he's, he told us off air he had to rush back to uh, – to a hearing. And so what we'll do is we'll take a short break too in a minute as well. Steve Millington in the studio with us talking a little bit more in the next half hour about we got, there's the, 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 when you talk about political stories, last night is a big one. Boy, it really was. <laughs> and uh, and have you ever flipped coins before? Have I? Uh, yeah, I, I have. I, I've been present when that has occurred. How many times do you keep getting the same? Um, statistically, it's supposed to be 50-50, but you have to flip that coin a lot of times in order for that statistical average to get to the median point. I figure they put, it's a coin with Debbie Wasserman Schultz's face on it. Oh, dear. And that big nose weights one side, so it always <laughs> comes down heads. It's it's 8.30. Steve Millington in studio with us. He's the chairman of the Twin Falls County Republican Party, Bill Colley as well, on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com.